Today we're pitting three of the internet's most popular chefs against each other to see which one makes the best pasta. Each of these guys is a heavy hitter in their own regard. They each bring their own flair and style to the cooking video universe. So to keep the playing field level, I've chosen a similar dish from each chef that features a red sauce. Then at the end of the video, we're gonna take the best components from each single dish to Frankenstein together the ultimate pasta bowl. In typical fashion, let's start with the most involved dish from none other than our boy, binging with Bibby. <clears throat> it's Bibby today. All right, Babish's sauce. He starts with two shallots. Oh my lord, oh my lord. Those are strong. Ugh, hold on, need some protection. All right, better. Going for a nice fine dice here, just like Bibby. Fantastic. Okay, cool thing about garlic. So he was cutting his really, really thin and then made a reference to the movie Chef, which is a great movie that I haven't seen in a long time. However, not every kitchen has one of these, right? This is literally a truffle slicer. Honestly, the way I use it, it's definitely more of a garlic slicer. It's basically just a little mini mandolin, right? So I'm going to slice my garlic on this and it gives you these beautiful, perfect little slivers of garlic. Sure, you could do it with a knife, but this is gonna be a lot more uniform, which means that they're gonna cook at the exact same rates, which means hopefully you won't have burnt garlic in your pan. Some things in life you can come back from, burnt garlic is not one of them. I'm looking at you, Mel Gibson. Let's do a Gibby reference. Papa, Papa Gibson right here. Let's hang out with Gibson. <laughs> Gibby and Bibby. Gibby and Bibby, Gibby and Bibby, dude. Do you think Gibby and Bibby chill? I heard Babish and Mel Gibson like chill. They're like boys. All right, what order does he do this? I. Mm. Mm. Chilio, got it. Hockey, Olive Earl. Looks like he used about a fourth cup. I'm just gonna kind of send that much. That looks about right. Shallot, I feel like that much. I'm gonna just kind of stir that around a bit. Sweat them out. Le sweet, le smell of shallot. All right, that looks about right. We're gonna pop our garlic in. Stir that around. Mmm, that. What's cooking in here, starter pack? Onions, garlic, oil, you're gonna be good. All right, tis time for the tomato paste. This is actually one of the things that sets his sauce kind of um, aside from the other two we're gonna do. This adds sort of more of like a depth, almost like a richness, that cooked flavor, if you will, that the other pastas that we're gonna make today just don't really have, so for better or worse, right? That looks about right. And what's cool about this is that it's actually gonna create a fond once we mix it around, which we are going to use to harness the flavor of like the caramelized tomato. So just give this a stir, make sure you not burn your garlic, which mine is almost burning. <laughs> Dig in the look of this, this little base we got going here. Okay, cherry tomatoes. Cute little balls of acidic pop, right? Right now it's not tomato season. These were grown in a hot house. The tomatoes come out pretty good, not quite as good as like an August, late summer tomato, but it's gonna get the job done. Turn that down a bit. If you're worried about that burning, pop some water in there. Gorgeous, gorgeous. <whistles> While we're waiting for those tomatoes to pop and open up, let's get going on our pasta. These are the Bibby noodles. I think they're super cute and super fun, and quite frankly, I'm super excited to try them. They look like they are die cut because they're kind of like rough around the edges there, which is awesome because when you cook that, the sauce kind of clings to that. That's sort of like a mark of a more like artesian extruded pasta, if you will. But yeah, we're just gonna pop these into some boiling salted water until they're al dente and finish the sauce when the sauce is finished. All right, let's check on this. Yes! See that? See how just they're breaking down at, at, when you just poke them oh so lightly and they'll just kind of explode onto themselves? That's what we're going for. We want nice, soft tomatoes, just like me. Cool. I think that's ready for the pasta. A little starchy pasta water. Let's talk about what else we're gonna put in this thing. Some parsley. Just gonna take a little pinch of that, pop that in. Basil, he chops his basil up and he's like, don't chop your basil up until the last second or it's gonna be bruised. And it's like, I don't know, to me, unless you're garnishing and topping with basil, like your basil's gonna cook into the sauce anyway. So it's gonna be like kind of brown and blackened anyways. But I'll show you a fun little culinary school trick here that I never went to. <laughs> Everybody's mom like loves this technique, <laughs> put it that way. It's called a chiffonade, which I'm sure you guys know how to do. If you went to high school, dude, because look what we're doing. We're just rolling up, dude. 
And you just do this. Nice little pretty ribbons for the top of your paste. That little above and beyond step, you know? That'll impress some moms. I'm gonna put half of this in. We'll save some of that for later for the garnish. Then this stuff. Mini balls of mozzarella. We're gonna pop some of these in, a la baby. I don't know, like that much maybe. Kind of mix that around. Those herbs are gonna kind of wake up in that heat. The pasta sauce is looking nice and reduced. Look at that. I mean, I like the color in this, the green, the white, the red, it's pretty. And we shall finish with a knob of good old butter. As anybody who makes pasta knows, that is never a bad idea. So pop that in there, mix it around. It's gonna make the noodles like shiny and glossy and definitely a lot richer. Beautiful, beautiful. A little bit of parmigiano, reggiano. Add to that umami factor, AKA Italian MSG. Wow, Parmesan literally is Italian MSG. That's kind of like an epiphany that I just had. Mm. Whoa, that was crazy. All right, this is done, baby. I think you've done something real nice here. All right, we're gonna put this aside, get going on the next dish. Gordon Ramsay, right? Uncle Ramsay, Tito Ramsay. Man needs no introduction. This man has been on the internet, he's been on TV, he's been everywhere doing the cooking thing for a very long time. His take on this pasta dish is a little more Mediterranean and summery than the other two. Let me show you what I mean. Good old anchovies. Garlic and anchovies are always a good idea. We're actually gonna use the oil and the anchovies in our preparation here. So I'm gonna drop that right here. Not that, don't do that. Off you, you fat, useless sack of fucking Yankee Danky doodle We're gonna grab those and chop these up. Run your knife through them. He uses a lot of anchovies in his, I was kind of surprised, but I like anchovies. I think they taste nice and salty and umami rich, so keep these on the minced ch chunky side. Don't gotta be perfect. Beautiful. And we'll pop that in right there. Well, those are sizzling, you know what, since we're here. I got my minced garlic. I'm just gonna pop that in too. Get those two things kind of warming up together. And then interestingly, instead of using like a chili flake like a normal person, of course, Gordon has like fresh chilies in his pantry. These are just some chilies de arbol that I had. Arbol chilies. I'm just gonna I'm gonna just chop these up for that little heat factor here. You can totally just use chili flake, but pop that in. And that is gonna be our base, and that is a powerful base. And you know what? Just because I'm sure Gordy wouldn't mind, a little more olive oil. Help that fry up. I feel like whenever Gordon also cooks and talks, he's always like so stoked and excited and he kind of like jumps up and down. So like, I'm excited too. This is what I meant by like Mediterranean. <laughs> he calls these black olives, but if you watch the video, those are Kalamata olives, man. If you think I'm wrong, comment below, but I'm 95% sure those are Kalamata olives. So. I happen to live by a Greek grocery store that imports these from Greece, so we're gonna pop these right in there. Beautiful. Got some salted capers. So the theme here, salty, briny. We're gonna do our halved cherry tomatoes. Cracked black pepper. Tiny pinch of salt, because remember, all those ingredients are already so salty. You don't need that much. Just gonna mix that around a bit. Mm, mm, mm. All right. That's literally it. All we gotta do now is cook our sketty. Long noodles, the only long noodle of the bunch. Probably use like three quarters. There you go. All right, let's drop. I'm not gonna use the basket for these. Pop them in there. Cool. Okay. Got our big al dente. Long boy noodles of sketty. Tito, you've done it again. Tito Gordy. Man, if I came home to that after a long day at school and my dad just like was Gordon Ramsay and like had this ready, life would be different, you know? Is that what about your dad? No, I, lo I love my dad. But why can't you be more like Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> let, me, let me talk one more time. Dad, I love you, Dad. I don't mean any of that. This is just for a bit. I love you. If you keep putting this in, I want you to let my dad know that I love him. I will let him know. Love you, Dad. But Jordan, Jordan Ramsey. <laughs> but Gordon Ramsey is jacked. He is jacked. Have you seen that guy? He does like marathons now. I think he's like 60. How old is Gordon Ramsey? Yeah, probably six. Yeah, like 60. 
and he does marathons and he's jacked and he knows how to make pasta. Pff. So you wish your dad was No, dude. Oh. Q ready. Sick. Our third and final dish is from our boy Ethan Shablowski. Shle Ethan Shlablowski. E Ethan Cheb? Ethan Cheblowski? I don't want to butcher his name. He seems like a great guy. He seems like the type of guy I'd want him to like look into my finances and like see what's wrong with it. You know what I mean? Or like like help me build a shed or something. Like I don't know. He he just seems very trustworthy. We're gonna put some respect on his name. Ethan Shlabowski. The big Shlabowski. <laughs> All right, baby. Okay, Ethan's pasta dish uses everything that we see here. And one ingredient that I'm kind of stoked about, but I'm gonna, kinda, I'm gonna try to contain myself here, but it rhymes with bossage. This is the bossage. <laughs> Hot Italian sausage that I literally just simmered in water and let cool so they are completely cooked through so we can slice them thin. The Shoblowski special. Shlobowski, Shlobowski. Really guiding my knife through so that I can get nice strokes and clean pieces. Okay. We are going to take some butter, drop her in, and we're just gonna sear these off until they kind of caramelize in the pan a little bit. There you go. Look at this. If I don't see fennel, I don't want it. Yes, what does he do? I like that Stack thickness. Beautiful. Rosemary is V strong. Matter of fact, I don't fully like to cook with it all that much, like aside from Thanksgiving, because it's just like very strong. I'd rather like, I don't know, sage my house with it, <laughs> or like light it on fire in my bathroom. That's normal, right? Cool. All right, these are looking nice. All that rendered pork fat. I'm using a fish spatula because it's got the holes in it. So it drains all that oil and leaves it in the pan. And look at this, look at all that leftover incredible butter slash spiced lard mixture. I'm gonna turn that heat down just a touch. And we'll add in our rosemary. Fresh rosemary. We'll sizzle a bit. Well that's sizzling, we're gonna open up our San Marzano tomatoes. These are whole San Mar right? Yeah, these are whole San Marzano tomatoes. He said about half a can in his video, so we'll go for half a can. Half a can San Marzano tomatoes. That's like half a can, right? I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of water to thin it out. All right, just kind of deglaze using the tomato and the water. While this is heating up and kind of simmering down, the tomatoes are breaking down, let's do the pasta. This is a super interesting shape that Ethan decided to use and I'm lucky enough to have been able to find these at the grocery store because I was kind of worried I wouldn't. Trotole, I like it. But look at this. I mean, how? What even, whose idea was this? I mean, I like it. People are creative. Um, that looks good. Fantastic. All right, so in his video, he says that blending the sauce is optional, but just looking at this stuff here, my San Marzano tomatoes seem to be a little heartier and heftier, and are gonna take a lot of time to break down. This has already been going for six to eight minutes, something like that, so I think these look fine, but we are gonna puree these and uh, take that extra step just to ensure we're doing him, doing him right here. Back in with you. Look at that color change without any cream in there or anything. All right, sauce back on. We're gonna add in a little bit of our creme. This is just a heavy cream. And a pinch of red peppy flakes. And then we bring this to a simmer. Kinda looks like a vodka sauce. Sans vodka. All right, let's do this. Sausage in. All that grease, love it. Swing, mm. drain that off, pop some of that in. All of it, yeah, there you go. And a little bit of pasta water too, won't hurt. I mean, look at that. This looks awesome. You lost a soldier. I love when the pasta sauce like just completely coats everything in the bowl, sticks to it real nicely. 
We don't even have to reduce this that much. This is looking great already. We got a contender. All right, so we're done making all three pasta dishes. The only thing left to do now is finish them off, then pit them against each other and see which one we like the most. All right, the time has come. We're gonna taste test these guys and see which one we dig the most. I think I'm gonna start with which one I think is going to be the weakest, which probably has to be Tito Gordy. This looks like great pasta, but it just kind of looks like it's gonna be a little, again, simple's not bad, but maybe a little too simple and maybe a little too briny and a little too anchovy-y, just judging by the smell, but I'll shut up and use my taste buds instead of my annoying brain. Hmm. Nice heat on that. Those chili peppers are really coming through. To my surprise, not too anchovy-y. Um, there's a lot of brine going on in here. We got our olives, we got our capers, we got our anchovies. The tomatoes themselves are acidic. Those chilies make it super hot. This is, a, this is a pretty balanced, very light pasta dish. Would not mind crushing this on like a beautiful sunny, you know, afternoon with like a glass of wine on the Amalfi Coast or something like that. All right, moving on. I'm going bad. Babish, got a lot going on here. Two different kinds of fresh herbs. We have our melted cheese, the tomatoes, the squiggly noodles, which I think are really fun. I'm really excited for this. All right, let's give it a go. Okay, not bad, not half bad. I think the most exciting part of this pasta are the noodles. It's just pretty classic, pretty bare bones, basic gunion, gunion. That's garlic and onion, gunion. <laughs> I just came up with a new word. <laughs> Basic shallot and garlic sort of like situation with a little bit of pasta sauce. This is this really is pretty no frills. Moving on. Ethan Schlebowski. We did it. Look at that. Big, nice, chunky. I have to say, Ethan's is definitely looking the prettiest as far as color. All right, little sausage, little sauce, little pasta. <laughs> okay, hear me out. To me, this kind of tastes like one thing. Kind of tastes like pizza. <laughs> It's got this like porky, meaty flavor to it, but for whatever reason, those San Marzano tomatoes mixed with a little bit of the cream and that fat kind of gives me pizza grease energy, which sounds kind of nasty, but like it's not nearly at all. It's actually quite delicious. And with the little Parmesan stuck to it as well. It is fun to eat too, even though there's no noodle situation. Mm. This is tough because pasta is like, it's pasta, dude. It's like, it's like rating pizza. It's like, even if the pizza is like not that good, it's like still pizza. So I kind of need to like, put my garbage person normal self to the side and kind of put my chef hat on for this one and be a little more critical. And um, coming in third place, the weakest link in my humble opinion. <sighs> Sorry, man. It's gotta be Bibby. <laughs> it's gotta be Babish, dude. Like, not that this is bad. The thing here is that it's just like not that interesting of a pasta. To me, it's pretty like simple with the herbs and the tomatoes. And not that simple's bad. I'm not looking for anything like insane and the more components means it's better. But the mozzarella that he used, it's really, really cool and looks nice and is gooey for about two minutes. And then right after that, it just kind of solidifies like this and it gets a little too cold and not really what I want to be like eating globs of randomly like buried in my pasta. If it didn't have that, it would still be really tasty and really nice and really fun to eat because of the swiggles, but it's not like that, I don't know, special. Babish, third place. Sorry, Big Sexy, your voice is still probably the prettiest on the internet. Good evening. My name is Andrew Ray. I... Okay, coming in at the silver, it's gonna have to be Tito Gordy. All right, all right, all right. I pretty much think I talked about this like enough, maybe a little ad nauseum action, but this pasta is really, really nice. It's bright, it's fun. And in a different world, it might have taken first place depending on where I am in the season, right? I would much rather be eating this outside overlooking something gorgeous with a glass of wine. There's a lot of salty components, a lot of umami rich components in this dish from the tomatoes to the anchovies, but it's just a little much for me. And it's not really what I think of when I think of like a red sauce. Still very good, very balanced. That means our winner is. Ethan Shablowski. Ethan Shablowski. I mean, I just really, everything about this is great. Maybe it's my bias being like such like a pizza like lover and like pizza maker, but it just reminds me so much of that. 
This pasta shape goes really well with the coins of sausage. I thought the coins of sausage was like a great take and a great choice to put into this dish. I don't taste the rosemary so much, but again, like I said earlier, I'm not super bummed about that. Rosemary can be very overpowering. It's just good. It's probably because the butter and the cream are just like tickling my dopamine receptors right now, but you know, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes to take the W. Congratulations, Ethan. Okay, now that that's settled, let's make a Frankenstein bowl. We got the garlic and anchovies from Tito Gordy. We got the tomato paste from Batty. And we got the sausage coins from Ethan. I added a couple things of my own. I deglazed with white wine to kind of like harvest that tomato paste, which is like why I chose to use that tomato paste in the first place. I had a little touch of fish sauce, which is made from anchovies just for a little extra umami in there. And I garnished with Pecorino Romano as opposed to Parmigiano Reggiano. It's just a little more sharper, a little more zingy. I thought it could add a nice little, almost like acidic touch to the pasta. That is tomato-y, cheese. It's kind of like everything that I want to see in a bite of pasta, and it includes one of each strength from each of our dishes. Salute. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I consider that a success. That was quite the journey, and remember, I'm just a guy. Comment below what you think your favorite pasta dish would be. Also, comment your favorite creator in a dish that you'd like to see me make of theirs. If you dug the video, be sure to like the video. Helps us out a ton. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're not new to the channel, hi. Squeeze your little cheek there. Welcome back. The best and easiest way to support is over on the Patreon. For literally five bones a month, you get access to exclusive giveaways, secret recipes, all that good stuff. And even if you can't support, that's totally fine too. No worries. Come say what up in the Discord. We're, we be chatting over there. We're hanging. We're having a good time. We're telling secrets. That's pretty much all I got for you this time. So until next we meet. Ciao.